Welcome back to Energy TV. Um, I caught up with Andy Glover and Neil Ford at CodeMash to ask them what they thought the sort of next step in their evolution of development would be to take advantage of the um, multi-core processes in hardware that we buy today. Concurrent programming is hard, we all know that. Do you think that um, the dynamic language shift um, that, that's, that's sort of happening now um, is going to help this problem or do you think we're going to have to struggle um, to do this properly in Java or do you think there's going to be um, a huge shift in the way we program um, to, to, to sort of cater for this uh, new hardware architecture? So I think, um, I think Java is actually maturing and is trying to uh, address those concerns head on. Uh, so languages like Scala and Erlang I think are uniquely positioned to handle you know, true concurrency. You know, Java's not necessarily, when it was built over a decade ago, isn't necessarily a, a concurrent threading model or like an asynchronous threading model. Um, so clearly, the language is evolving, hardware is evolved to the point where you have now parallel processing. There are some uh, uh, proposals for Java 7 and Java 8 for the joint fork uh, concurrent programming. Uh, and some interesting things there. So I think the language itself is trying to mature and is looking at other languages, other paradigms, like I said, Scala and Erlang, to you know steal those features, if you will, or borrow those and put those into Java. Now they may be shoehorned or not. We'll see. Another great example of you know features not necessarily geared towards concurrency, but you know like closures in Java. That looks to me like it's been shoehorned in there. Uh, so I think those other languages have their place. I think they'll become more and more popular as uh, developers start to realize that more and more machines, if you want to take advantage of this stuff, you can't do it out of the box in Java right now. And I think over time, Java will become, uh, will embrace those features. And, you know, I don't think it'll be a huge shift. It won't, won't be uh, a huge cerebral effort to, to learn that. I think it's going to get really hard, and then it's going to get really easy. Because every time we face one of these really nasty problems in computer science, we figure out a way to abstract that away. We don't write much in assembly language anymore because that's just too hard to get anything useful done. We build abstractions on top of that. We constantly build abstractions on top of things. And I think that the abstractions we're going to build around multi-core access are going to be based on languages like Scala, like Haskell, some of these functional languages that inherently solve that problem so that we don't have to think about it. I don't think that we're going to build a version of Java where concurrency is easy because it's just a really hard problem. I don't even think it's worth spending time doing that use the languages that are already well suited for that just for the parts of your application that really need that and then use simpler, easier to use languages for the parts of the application that don't require that. This, this one language to rule them all meme is a bad, bad idea and the advent of the JVM and the CLR makes it easy to mix and match languages now and truly use the language that makes most sense for the problem that you're trying to solve on a very, very atomic, very granular scale. I think over the next well few years, this is going to be a recurring theme at many conferences we'll see. And um, it's exciting times now because the hardware has moved into an area where we haven't really experienced this before, where we're going to need to, um, to, to make a huge change in, in, in uh, the way we develop. Anyway, um, from Energy TV, again, thanks for joining us. See you next time.